going on guys? Today I'm going to show you how to replace the front four-wheel drive actuator on your 07 and a half to 2012 Silverado GMC Sierra. Um, should be the same steps basically. Might even work on the newer trucks if they have the same axle. But I know it does work for this body style um, for sure, which would be I believe 07 and a half to 2012. So here is the part number. I'll put it in the description if you'd like to purchase this. Um, there's a hole in the four-wheel actuator that we're replacing today. That's why we're changing it. So let's go ahead and get started. And this is why we are replacing it. Somehow there's a hole in it. I'm gonna go ahead and use a flat blade screwdriver, a little pocket one to unplug the pigtail connector. Here is the new one. And you can see that it just threads in, it's plastic. So I'm gonna use, uh, you can use a big crescent wrench or a pipe wrench. I'm gonna use just a channel locks. Um, it's gonna go ahead and screw the old one out. Should be lefty loosey, righty tighty. So. All right, now just a heads up. Um, there was an issue with my four-wheeler drive actuator here. Um, there was some rocks wedged between the axle tube and this plastic piece. So when I was trying to loosen it, uh, this was binding up on those rocks. So I had to tighten it back up and pry the rocks and debris out of there. Now it can rotate. Seven years later. Never hurts to make sure none of your pieces broke off. So I'll take a good look inside this tube here. Stinks, but it doesn't look like there's anything broken up in there, so we're gonna go ahead and continue with the new one. All right, so as you can see, um, there was some silicone around here that sealed this solenoid. There is no O-ring on here, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean the old uh, silicone off and put a new bead on there. All right, we've got this cleaned off pretty good. Now we're gonna go ahead and put silicone on the new solenoid and install it. All right, I got ahead and put a fresh bead of silicone on here. I probably put a little bit more on there than I needed to, but overkill is underrated. Uh, make sure you're using an uh, oil resistant silicone, such as this right stuff right here. I'll put a link in the description if you'd like to get this. It sets up in one minute, so it's nice and uh, convenient. You don't have to wait very long for it to dry. Give it one more good wipe down to get all the oil off so the silicone can cure. And then, thread it in, thread it in. All right guys, so as you can see there, I just kind of snugged up the new actuator. I didn't really reef on it too hard. Once the uh, channel lock slipped off, I called her quits. It is just plastic. You don't want to crack it or anything. I'm sure this part's not exactly cheap. 
Uh, one thing I did want to note is that I was having issues getting the new actuator threaded in. Um, it kept wanting to cross thread for some reason and it messed up the plastic thread so I actually ended up having to kind of repair them on the new one and then I was able to get it threaded in but don't force it. Um, make sure you thread it in by hand. You should only have to use the channel locks um, once you get it about halfway threaded in because it does stiffen up a little bit. Um, it should go in about just as hard as it came out. If you got to force it any harder than that, you mess up threads. And don't forget to plug your electrical connector in. Make sure you hear it click. And of course, the last step is to verify that your four wheel drive still does work. So we're going to go ahead and got the truck running in neutral. Four high and four low. Make sure to hit that like button if this video helped you out. Subscribe for more videos like this. Make sure you hit the bell notification button next to the subscribe button so you get my videos when they're uploaded. Check me out on Facebook at Tony the Truck Guy. Thanks for watching.